In the previous unit, we talked about levels. We looked at how you create them and we discussed when and where you would use them. In this unit, I just want to have a short discussion on the relationship between the levels we create and the floor plan views. So here is a simple model. I'll just rotate that quickly, give you guys an idea of what we've got here. A very simple rectangular building two stories, a ground floor and a first floor. That's all we need to say discuss this concept. I'll just switch to a south elevation so that you can see in this model we've got three levels and I've named them ground floor, first floor and eaves. If we look over in the project browser you'll see that there are three floor plans that relate to each of those levels. So if I switch to a first floor floor plan, you'll appreciate that Revit is generating this floor plan view from our model and it's basically a camera looking down into our model and cutting through the walls and the doors at a certain height. Likewise, if I go to the ground floor plan, it's the same. Revit is now cutting the model lower down to generate this floor plan view. So with that in mind, you'll appreciate that each of these floor plans has a relationship with these levels because it's these levels that help dictate exactly where Revit is cutting through the model to generate each of those floor plans. So if I go back to my ground floor and if I don't have any model elements selected in the window the properties palette shows us the properties of the floor plan itself and if we scroll down we'll see we've got a parameter there associated level ground floor. So this floor plan here called ground floor is associated with the level called ground floor. So we've just said that each floor plan needs an associated level otherwise Revit would have no way of being able to generate these views because it wouldn't know how high to cut through the model. I'll just mention now this setting here just above associated level called view range and there's an edit button there. That controls exactly how each floor plan is created in relationship to its associated level. So you can see there we said the associated level for this particular floor plan is called ground floor. If I go into the view range settings by hitting edit there, I get a panel up here, view range, and in here we can set exactly related to that ground floor where Revit cuts through. So the cut plane there, where the camera is at the top of that view, how far Revit looks down into the model. So the bottom, this is all to do with the primary range and view depth. So what other objects can we see outside that primary range? I'll go through this view range settings panel in a lot more detail later on in the course. But just to let you know, that is where you fine tune the generation of each floor plan. So I'll pop that away there. So if I now switch back to south elevation, I'm just going to create a new level. I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut LL and I'll put one about here. Click to place my level. Notice Revit has generated the level, the horizontal datum we looked at in the last unit and it's also at the same time generated a floor plan that's associated with that level. So the creation of these floor plans is automatic. 
you generate or you specify the level you need and Revit will go and add in to this floor plans group a level three floor plan. So it's taken the level name and it's made the floor plan have the same name. So really what I'm stressing in this unit, uh, the, the importance of understanding that we have levels which are horizontal datums and we have floor plans which are separate entities but they obviously have a relationship because these are uh, horizontal planes in our 3D world that have a, a height, a Z coordinate and these floor plans are generated by each of these levels. So we've just seen how each floor plan must have an associated level in order to generate it. However, each level does not necessarily need an associated floor plan. And I'll just show you what I mean by that. Let's say we want to create a new level down here for our, our suspended ceiling. I'll use the keyboard shortcut LL. Just put that reminder away. Put the level in about here. Now, just before I do that, if we look at the options bar here, Remember the options bar, this part of the interface that comes into play once you've selected a tool. If you look on the options bar, there is a very important tick box there, make plan view. By default, it's got a tick against it. And that is why when we create a level, we also get an associated plan view because we've asked Revit to generate a plan view at the same time we're making a level. However, if I turn that off, now I can create a level and you'll notice the level is called level 4. We don't get a plan view created for that level. Many reasons why we would want levels in our model without a plan view. Um, for example, if this was a level which I use to control the height of a suspended ceiling for example you will appreciate that we wouldn't necessarily want a floor plan view at suspended ceiling level typically we'd want our plan views at ground floor at story heights here first floor we'd probably want a roof plan which we could generate from the eaves level but there will be many other datums in your design i.e. steel work levels, suspended ceiling levels maybe sill heights where you need a level to control those components but you don't necessarily need a floor plan generated at that particular level hence I'll just bring up the level command again LL you may want to untick that so you create a level without creating a plan view. Alternatively, if you have created a level and a plan view at the same time, there is nothing stopping you just deleting the plan view. So if I select level three, right click, hit delete. Notice the plan view is deleted from the project browser. However, the level, level three, remains in the model. So we've just seen how you can create levels without floor plans by unchecking the tick box, remember, on the options bar, or you can simply delete floor plans that have previously been generated. So what happens if you've got a level in your model which doesn't have a floor plan, but you now decide that you need a floor plan uh, for that particular level? So for example, level four here, remember we didn't create a floor plan, so there's nothing listed in the project browser. So now we decide we need a floor plan generated at this level. All we need to do is go to the view menu, 
and there's a panel there called create and if we go to plan views it'll drop down there select floor plan new floor plan dialog box comes up and the important tick box down here do not duplicate existing views with that ticked which it is by default basically Revit has filtered out and is displaying just the levels in our model which don't currently have a floor plan associated with them or generated I can pick level 4 from the list and say yes I would like a floor plan generated based on level 4 and we look over in the project browser and Revit has gone ahead and created a new floor plan associated with level 4 and it's taken its name from the level name hence level 4 and that completes this unit to get the most out of this training material please take the complete course online at bimscape.com here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.